Hey everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. Got another really nice Lincoln Town car to bring you this week, folks. A gorgeous 1995 Lincoln Town car, Cartier edition. For everybody who commented on my last video of the 2003, correcting my uh, mispronunciation of the word Cartier, as I say it, it's Cartier. And I appreciate everybody's concern for my choice of words and how I say it. But I will still call it a Cartier just because that's how I've always called it. Anyways, a gorgeous 1995 example. First year of this slightly updated square body style look um, that many people say are the best of the 90s for the town car. 95, 6, and 7 is no doubt the most sought after of these square boxy town cars. Uh, my favorite as well. This car's got 46,000 original miles. It is a one family owner car out of Missouri. I bought this car from a YouTube subscriber. I was super excited to have the opportunity to have this car. And to be quite honest, as I film this video, I am also super sad that I have to let this car go. Because this car to me is a once in a lifetime uh, in the color and the trim and the amount of options that this car has, the condition, everything about this car is a unique, unique piece. I have a lot of these mid-90s town cars and this one just really screams mid-90s town car to me. Uh, you can see here the beautiful charcoal gray exterior uh, in the sunlight. It shows charcoal gray, but it does have a small hint of kind of like a lavender color or maybe a lilac. Some people say mauve. Ma I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that word right. Um, but it's, it's got a different color to it and I really like it. Uh, then it's got the black canvas ENG cloth top, uh, which sets it off nicely with the opera lights, the gold buttons and snaps, and then the luggage rack on the trunk. Love it or hate it. It was a very 80s and 90s thing. All the gold ornamentation. It's a really nice, clean example of this sought after body style. So I was happy to have it. I'm happy to have the opportunity to buy it uh, from one of my YouTube subscribers. I'm gonna go around and show you some of the uh, marks and you know discrepancies with the car. Very few minor things I like to point it out. One of the things was, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see like a line in the lower part of the bumper there. So this car had, when I bought it, uh, stainless on the rear bumper and the front bumper, and it wasn't stainless, it was like a plastic chrome. You can see the chrome down on the bottom here. So this was missing on the car, and the pieces were still on the front and rear bumpers. I removed the front and rear bumper pieces, and the reason that the center section pieces were removed were because the chrome that they put on from the dealer was a plastic chrome, I guess, for lack of better terms. And it's since chipped off and the family elected to take it off the bottom of the doors. So I cleaned the rest of the glue off and I replaced it with a nice, beautiful set of stainless. This is real stainless put on the bottom of this car. Highly polished. You can see it's like a mirror finish. Uh, but I didn't like, I don't like the chrome on the front and rear bumpers. And the set that I got made by a local company here in Massachusetts, uh, it came up to about here. So this section you could still see, and this is what it is, it's fade from age of the car on that lower two-tone section. So to make it not look stupid and draw your eyes to it, I left that off. I really don't even like the chrome on the bumpers anyways. I do have the pieces if you want them, I will include them with the car, but I left that off. So on all four corners, you can kind of see that. This side as well. It's really minor. When you're standing next to the car, you don't really notice it as much. But where I'm pointing it out, obviously, it's noticeable. Front bumper as well. You can kind of see it. It went up to right about here. And uh, I didn't like it, so I left it off. Uh, aside from that, I'll point out a few other little discrepancies. You can see here, match set of Michelin Symmetry white wall tires on a gorgeous set of 16-inch alloy wheels. Right up on the top of the hood here, you can see a little chip of paint right on the edge. It looks like something might have hit the hood and then came across. 
you can see here a scratch in the windshield across the chrome and then onto the door and mirror it's very minor this isn't a chip in the glass or a crack but a uh, scratch uh, i don't know what that was from but that's that is there the body is nice and straight very clean you can see here another michelin symmetry beautiful uh, alloy wheels these 16 inch alloy wheels were very common on the 97 model year 96 model year cars the signatures and the car years 95 they weren't as common so it's a really unique piece to have that and it's on the window sticker cloth top it's a stay fast cloth is in great shape but you can see there right in the center it's like a stain probably a little bit bigger than a quarter i want to assume that's probably from like a garage door opener or something above it that may have leaked on it but you can see here the top is in really nice shape all the stitching and trim around the rear window and all the stainless trimming around it is in phenomenal shape. It's got a aftermarket set of opera lights that both do work. It's in really nice shape, well kept, a sign of a garage car and this car was garage its whole life. Uh, alloy or aluminum, I should say. Trunk rack, love it or hate it, it's there, it's on the car, it's coming with the car. It was a very classic aftermarket add-on that you see you know back in the 80s and not as much into the 90s but it was kind of neat to see on this car uh come around the back here you can see just a few little marks a little bit of a paint chipping off the uh bottom of the bumper you got a little mark right here a couple little light scratches right there all the gold is very nice on this car not faded or worn off Come around this side we'll show you this alloy wheel another nice example very clean a little bit of a corrosion mark right there maybe from an old wheel weight and right up on the door here just a couple little scratches right in there i tried polishing those off but it's in a really tight spot now if you watch some of my videos on some of my other cars uh, i think it was a lincoln mark 8 and my buddy paul's deville these side moldings it's weird this car has that same pimply bubbly effect on just these pieces here these two the rear door is perfectly fine uh, what causes that I have no idea I really don't know and if it was all on one side it'd be more understandable but it's just those two pieces on this car have that effect that's a plastic chrome uh, so there's really not much you can do with it uh, another Michelin symmetry beautiful 16 inch alloy wheel bring it back over here show you just a little mark from maybe grandma catching the garage door at one point a few little chips on the front bumper very clean all the chrome on the grill surround the gold hood ornament is in great shape and lastly i want to point out this car i was told by the previous owner wasn't a light hailstorm you can see here the hood and the deck lid everything's in great shape they had a professional pdr that's paintless dent removal service take care of all the dings in this car so you can you can't even notice it the only part of this car that you can still see some dings in is this small strip of stainless or not stainless uh, aluminum right here and you can kind of see a few little dings there on that side it's not really bad on this side it's really on this half of the hood that trim piece and see a few little dings there uh, i want to be transparent i'm always transparent uh, that's a a good thing to be but you can see here how nice the hood is there's really no other dings in the hood and now that i pointed that out i'll show you the deck lid as well there's no dings in the deck lid all the glass is the original glass the top again all in nice shape so the very few dings that were on this car were all professionally removed with a paintless dent removal service. They did a phenomenal job. I'm gonna open up the inside of this car. I'm gonna show you inside, under the hood, in the deck, in the trunk lid area, and uh, then we're gonna take it for a spin. All right, we're gonna get inside this gorgeous 1995 Lincoln Town Car, available here at Specialty Motor Cars. I wanna thank everybody for watching my videos. This is my normal time that I throw my little plug in there to subscribe you can see the 
fingers pointing down below hit that subscribe button if you like these big mom and pop town cars cadillacs buicks i hunt all over for these cars i buy them i freshen them up and i get them ready for sale here and this is one of them i'm super happy to have the opportunity to have uh, so without further ado get back into this car but don't forget to hit that subscribe button i really appreciate all the love and support we just hit twenty four thousand uh subscribers on my channel so i'm super excited super happy and i'm glad this is a car i can celebrate with beautiful two-tone gray uh leather interior with the darker gray upper and the lower gray on the bottom really in nice shape all the wood trim it has the heated seat feature which is kind of rare for these mid-90s town cars cartier i believe it was standard in you can see here even nice little trinkets like that with the Cartier uh, insignia stamped on the door. The jams are all in nice shape, nice and clean. The weather stripping is all there. You can see the carpet freshly shampooed. Beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel with audio controls and cruise control controls. Cruise control controls. The leather seating is absolutely lovely in this car. I love the Cartier seats. You can see it's got that extra cushy feel to it. Cartier had to step up the game over the Signature and Executive Series town cars. And when they did these Cartier interiors, they did a great job at making them over the top comfortable. And this is a fine example of that car. Rear door here, again, inside the jam, nice and clean, no rust or corrosion. This car was a Missouri car, but a sheltered, well cared for Missouri car. There's really no rust on this car. It's, it's an amazing, amazing time capsule. Couple things that I want to point out though, with 1995 being the first year this style and, and update and any 97 owners might be able to compare. You see here how the 95 had this nice cloth on the door panels. Little things like the Lincoln star is uh, outlined in chrome and then the little courtesy light that lights up the ashtray. Little things like that were actually discontinued after the 1996, I think midway 96 and into the 97s. They did away with stuff like that, these pull straps and other odds and ends. Another thing that they did away with was inside these ashtrays and input, I, I don't believe they put uh, cigarette lighters anymore. It was just the ashtray. Little things like that, they, they really kind of cut back on, uh, which kind of disappoints me a little bit because it, it kind of gives it that true definition of luxury with the cloth coverings and the little chrome here and there. But just a little fact I thought I'd point out. You can see here how nice and clean the back seat is. The carpeting, freshly shampooed, headliner, rear deck area. Back seat is absolutely like sitting on your living room sofa. We'll go around to the passenger side here. Show you the passenger side of the back seat. Again, just as nice on this side. Door jams are very nice and clean. And this is the first 90s town car that I've ever had that I can at least remember that both of these ashtrays open and close perfectly. I didn't have to glue them shut like I normally do. They open and close, the spring action is perfect. Not broken or uh, flopping open like they normally do and I, I glue them closed. So this is a really nice, well-preserved car. Cartier upholstery, both seat belts. Get up to the headliner there. The front door. See here, all four doors have the Cartier script on it, or Cartier, I should say. Uh, heated seat, seat control, window. Also has these little cubbies. Really neat thing with the 90s town cars. You can see here, nice and wide, how clean the door jam is. Carpeting, freshly shampooed, very nice, very clean. I'm gonna show you that cell phone in a minute. You can see that passenger seat, nice shape. And the best thing about these cars is the nice flowing curves of the dash that then wrap around into the top of the door panels here, which I absolutely love. I love that look, and that's why I love these town cars. I'm gonna get behind the wheel. We're gonna start her up. I'm gonna get my plate on it. I'll pop the hood in the trunk, and we're gonna show you a few little details before we take this thing out on the road. All right, we're inside.
inside the cabin of the 95 Lincoln Town Car. I'm going to get this car started up. Show you the digital instrumentation that it shows. Got my trunk popped open and the hood as well. 46,521 miles on this time capsule. Really a hard loaded car. This car has almost all the options. I think actually it does have all the options uh, that a Cartier could come with. Uh, JBL sound system, which is a premium sound system for these cars. Oh, not that kind of rain. Gee whiz. Eh, here we go. Uh, beautiful sound system, JBL sound, no power antenna. 95 was the first year they did away with the power antenna, quarter mounted on these cars, and they integrated into the rear uh, glass. Uh, climate control is all digital. Center console here opens up to have dual cup holders, an ashtray, and a cigarette lighter, your rear defrost button. These buttons here control the readout of all this stuff here. On the side of the steering wheel here, you have a control for your steering dampening uh, that gives the steering a little bit more tension or uh, self-dampening uh, steering, I should say. You have lamps here, auto lamps, off, park, and then your headlights, uh, panel dimmer, mirrors, locks. One of the things that I is my pet peeves with these cars is the speaker grills. On most of the, well, on every single one of them, I should say. I'm not even gonna say most. On every single one of them, I clean these speaker grills because if you've never noticed, you'll see it's super common that these have an outline. You can see the grill, where it covers the grill and where it's kind of just exposed in the center there. And I hate, absolutely hate seeing dirty speaker grills because it kind of takes away from the, the look. So I clean those, one of my pet peeves. Let me show you this beautiful cell phone that Lincoln put in these cars. A crazy expensive option, but state of the art for 1995. You have your cell phone here, you can dial uh, a phone. Obviously it doesn't work. The three watt service has been disconnected. So you hear that, but it's kind of a cool feature. And that flips right open and folds right inside the console here. If you don't want that in there, you can remove it. There's a jack in there and it just pops right out. These are some of the paperwork uh, bits that I have with this car. The original factory owner's manual, uh, the lug key uh, window sticker. I have uh, some neat pamphlets from ENG Classic, uh, also from the sunroof manufacturer who made these sunroofs for Ford. Uh, the key tags, obviously Sacred Heart Auto League tags because uh, every town car would not be complete without stuff like that. Here is the uh, window sticker for the car. So you can see here up here on the top corner, charcoal gray clear coat metallic light graphite leather, uh, power sunroof, you have a $220 option for the conventional full-size spare tire, $690 option for the voice-activated cellular phone, ride control package, CD changer, $815. That's also in the trunk. Uh, and then these are just some of the options for the uh, dealer-installed accessories, the SimCon top, chrome luggage rack, chrome rocker moldings, chrome wheel lip moldings and the touch of gold package. The sticker on this car was $48,000. And that was 1995 money. I'm gonna show you under the hood, in the trunk, and we're gonna take this town car out on the road for a spin. I appreciate everybody tuning in for this long video. The longer ones are always the special ones. 4.6 liter V8. Everybody knows what's under the hood of these town cars. Super reliable, super dependable. Fantastic drive lines that they put in these cars that everybody says you see three, four, five 500,000 miles easy on these cars with proper maintenance. This is an example of that. Nice and clean, just detailed. You can see all the brake lines are nice and clean, no rust or corrosion. Very presentable, even has the under hood light. We'll go around to the back here. Open up the trunk. You can see here I have all four factory floor mats. The front mats have the Cartier insignia on them. And then beneath that, you see the black carpeted mat. Now, before I owned this car, I didn't even know these cars were available to come with a trunk mat. So this is a first for me. 
really cool. Still has the original trunk mat in it with the Cartier emblem. Over here on the left side, you can see here the 10 disc CD changer, Ford factory 10 disc CD changer, full size spare on a matched alloy wheel that's never hit the ground. Behind there, you have your jack. Uh, in the back there next to the amp, you have your jack, your lug wrench, and then the antenna for the uh, cell phone. Close the trunk down here. Pull down, works flawlessly. All right, we're gonna hop in. We're gonna take this Lincoln for a spin. I wanna take this moment again to thank everybody who's watched the video to the end here. I'm gonna take it for a little spin. Uh, and I do appreciate all my subscribers who support me on YouTube here. It's been a blessing. Uh, so when I got this car, one of the things that I had to do right off the bat, the rear airbags and the rear air suspension were leaking. Uh, common with the age of the car that the rubber starts to leak. The car had a check air suspension light. I I'm an advocate uh, for the air ride suspension in these cars. It's a very simple system, really. It's uh, two airbags, some solenoids on the airbags, lines, a pump, and a computer. My problem that I had with this car when I got it was that the bags were leaking, so I didn't know. Uh, so I put new bags in it, brand new bags. And then I went ahead and even replaced the pump because at the time of replacing the bags, the bags wouldn't vent when you close the door and shut these cars off. That's when the bags are supposed to vent on these cars uh, and lower the car down. The car wasn't doing that, so I replaced the air pump. In hindsight, I don't think it was the air pump that was wrong. I think it was the computer that may have had a malfunction because I had this problem plague me for the rest of my own. My dad just had a phone call here. Anyways, I had that problem plague me for the rest of my ownership on these cars or on this car so my issue that i had was uh that the car would pump up and when you went to close the door it still wouldn't vent i then replaced the module the computer control module behind the glove box and after replacing that it would vent it would pump it would vent everything was fine but the light was still on and after about 10 minutes or so the system would time out in doing that I figured, okay, well, it has to be this computer module. This is the second one I've put in. Let me replace it again. I got a third one, and that did absolutely nothing. No pumping, no venting, nothing. The fourth one pumped the car, the light went out, but it wouldn't vent. So after spending about 400 unnecessary dollars on uh, used components that I kept getting from salvage yards, buying them as is, uh, but working, tested, we promise, eBay sellers. Uh, I got fed up and I converted this car to coil springs in the back. So I took the factory bags out that I just replaced and I put coil springs in the trunk or in the <laughs> under the car, shut the switch off in the trunk and I bypassed the light here so you wouldn't have the check air suspension light. Unfortunately, 1995 was a, a specific year that 95 only those computer modules fit you couldn't interchange them with any other year so to find them good use is nearly impossible and that's why reluctantly i converted this car aside from that i replaced all four brakes pads rotors all the way around did upper ball joints rear shocks uh did a full coolant flush oil change a uh, few window regulators motors even replaced the fuel pump in the car that was starting to get a little weak so i went through this car very thoroughly to make it enjoyable for the next person without any problems of air suspension going bad or lights or not venting or any kind of craziness like that the car rides phenomenal i love the air ride suspension because it gives you that leveling feature but in a car like this where you're using it casually uh, the coil springs, it acts just like a, a conventional car. There's no leveling, but the car rides, handles, and, and drives just like a big full-size Lincoln or a uh, Ford product like a Grand Marquis or something like that that didn't have air suspension. Uh, so the car is ready to go, turnkey. My name is Anthony. I appreciate it again, everybody sticking in for this long video. My number is 978-930-1004. I appreciate all the love support. You can call me anytime. This car is getting offered at $99.95. You can call me, text me. Uh, you can check out my website, specialtymotorcars.net. 
Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can try to reach out to me in either of those uh, avenues. I appreciate everybody's tuning in. Thanks. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.